Hello. Welcome to my Julia Khan talk on regression formulae.jl, familiar formula syntax for regression. Uh, this is a little open source package that I uh, put together with my colleague Philip Alde at uh, Beacon Biosignals. Okay, so I want to start off talking about why we made this package in the first place. Uh, and there's two reasons. The first reason is that we wanted to provide some extended formula syntax for regression models that's based on commonly used syntax from R. Uh, we'll describe the two bits of syntax that are currently included in the package in a second. Um, the second, and I think more important reason, is uh, as a relatively small self-contained example of how to extend the statsmodels.jl formula domain-specific language uh, with custom syntax in a way that is opt-in, uh, and it applies only in specific modeling contexts. OK, so uh, what is the syntax that we've put into this package. Uh, the first bit of syntax is what we refer to as nesting. And so this is, uh, uh, the syntax is a, a slash, the division sign. Um, and so the A slash B expands to A plus the interaction between A and B. Um, and the way that interaction terms are expanded in the stats models formula DSL means that this ends up creating nested predictors for the effect of B or the slope of B at each individual level of the A predictor. Our A is a categorical variable, so something that's like strings or symbols with a discrete number of levels. Um, and this is an alternative to a full crossing or the A star B syntax. Uh, and the advantage of this syntax is that it produces more interpretable coefficients for the effect of B within each level of A. This is a common thing people want to know, right? What is the effect of a, uh, one predictor uh, in a bunch of different subgroups of the data that you have? Um, the downside to this, though, is that you lose the ability to compare, in a statistical sense, the effects of B at the different levels of A. Right. And if you want to do that, if that's more important than having an interpretable model where you um, get effects of B individually, uh, then it's better to use this full crossing A star B right, with the appropriate contrast coding for A. And that will give you uh, predictors that correspond to the differences between the effects of B at di across different levels or combinations of levels of A. Okay. The second bit of expanded syntax is this um, incomplete cross or exponentiation operator, right? And the way this works is that you can have a bunch of terms like A, B, and C, A plus B plus C plus a bunch of other terms, and then you exponentiate them or raise them to the nth power. And this creates um, all of the interactions of the A, B, C, et cetera terms up to and including the n way interaction, but no higher. So for instance, if we have something like A plus B plus C, uh, squared raised to this uh, exponentiated to the second power here, that expands to main effects of A, B, and C, and all the two-way interactions A and B, A and C, and B and C. Uh, but it notably does not include the three-way interaction of A and B and C that you would get if you did the full cross A star B star C. Okay, and the advantage of this is that it helps complete uh, helps tame the complexity of models that have many predictors and many different interactions when you compare it with full crossing. Because as you add more predictors, the number of interactions uh, in a full crossing design uh, grows very quickly. Right? OK, so that's the syntax. I want to talk a little bit now about how we actually accomplish that in this package. Uh, and this, again, underscores, the I think, the, the real utility of this package as a demonstration of how to extend stats models formula syntax for yourself. And the extensions, uh, the syntax extensions, are opt in at two different le and important levels, right? So on uh, the first level is that they're only active when the package is loaded, right? Because we implement the special syntax with these apply schema method definitions, and we'll go through a concrete example in a second. Um, they're opt in in the second way in that uh, they only apply to formulas that are being evaluated or expanded in certain contexts. By context here, I really mean a model type. Right. So these rules only apply for uh, models that are a uh, subtype of a, of a regression model. Okay. 
And the implementation follows a two-step two -step strategy that we've described elsewhere, but uh, I want to go over again. Right? So uh, the first step is to add methods to the base function that you're expanding, or whatever function it is that you're using to implement the syntax. So here, we're going to use the exponentiation operator, right, the caret. Um, for arguments that are abstract terms. And this is a type piracy because, uh, well, it's sort of light, maybe friendly type piracy because we are adding methods for um, terms that are, are defined outside of base, right, for a base method. Um, and then the second step is to add methods to the stats model that apply schema function. Okay, so the base methods for terms uh, for this um, uh, incomplete cross or exponentiation operator looks like this, right? Um, so we define a helper function combinations up to, which basically just takes all the combinations uh, up to and including um, uh, the n way uh, and combinations of n terms, right? And then we have a, a, a function that takes um, the um, expanded arguments that are as they're parsed by stats models during the formula macro expansion. Um, and then this, the last step here is to, uh, we low have a lo the lowest uh, method, which is basically what you end up using if you want to construct these terms at runtime, right? Where we ex exponentiate a, a tuple of terms arcs by a degree of uh, an integer. So this returns a, a sum of a bunch of these interaction terms that are defined uh, individually um, using this combinations up to helper function. This is taking from the uh, combinatorics package. Okay, and last, the second step is to uh, create a method for the apply schema function, which is defined in stats models, right? And this basically de defines the context in which this special uh, syntax applies, right? And so. The method definition below, right, where the first argument is a function term, where the um, which is parameterized by the type of the fun of the the function that is actually called, um, and the last argument, the context, is a type, uh, and here we're 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 just dispatching on subtypes of regression model. Right? You can ignore the schema argument for now. Um, and so what this basically says is that this syntax applies to calls to this caret function in inside the formula. And in the context of a, when you're fitting a regression model, some, some, top, some, some subtype of regression model. Um, and what this function actually does is pretty light, right? All it does is it pulls out the, arg the parsed arguments from the function term. So the first and the second argument are the uh, terms to be exponentiated and the degree of the exponentiation. Um, and then it calls the base method here, right? Where it actually, calls this function, the caret function, on the first and second arguments, and then recursively applies schema to the, um, the expanded uh, arguments there. And that's all. OK, so that's the end of the talk. Thank you for listening. And uh, any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. <laughs>